This is James Patrick at Slam Academy. I'm going to take a few minutes to cover how I like to set up my live set for performance. Uh, when I say performance, I mean any time where I'm going to want to like grab onto live and play the thing like a musical instrument. I mean, it's called live for a reason. Of course, we can sequence and program and arrange things on the timeline, but I'm way more interested in just having some fun sometimes. Maybe even if I'm at a gig and I've got some pre-recorded content, or even if I want to treat live like a DJ tool, or better yet, even plug my band in and start sampling and recording my band while I drop some drum machine clips, here are some tips that I'd like you to consider. I'm going to start off by showing you how I like to launch clips. First thing I do is I find a clip that I like and I click on it. <clears throat> and these are all keyboard tricks because we'll get to controller setups in a minute. I'm going to hold Command, and I'm going to click on the other clips that I like that I think I want to hear in this part of the song. Let's hit enter now and it's going to launch those. Note they don't have to be contiguous and mind you it is just command that we have to hold to launch them. So now I can just launch clips. And I can stop stuff too. The holding command thing is really helpful for a lot of reasons, especially because let's say I have a situation going where all the clips playing I think are real cool. And I want to like maybe jump them down into a new section. It's a really cool trick I can do called insert captured scene, where say I hit play on this. And I want to work with this later. What I can do is I can scroll to a new part of the clip slot grid that I'm not using yet and I could hit shift command I. That's going to copy those clips down to a new scene. So now I can move on and I can start improvising with the rest of this content in my clip slot grid. Maybe I want to launch other clips. Maybe I want to even interact with these clips in another fun way. Let's jam through this. I'm going to show you another cool trick involving launching clips. Come over here and launch these chords. I'm gonna grab grab all these guys. Take, take all those. I'm highlighting all those by hitting shift click or shift in my arrows. Well, show me down here. I have six clips selected. Now I can take a look down in the launch column. Inside of the launch column is where I'm gonna configure some really cool performance behaviors. In particular, first of all, I want to talk about the different launch modes. For people who use a push or an APC or a um, trigger finger or uh, anything that has pads for launching clips, a launch pad, this is a really handy function down here. Trigger is the default mode where anytime you click on the play flag or start button of a clip, it's just going to play it. And you can keep cl clicking and it's just going to keep playing it. Toggle is the other really popular mode for users of those controllers that I mentioned because now we can click and we can turn clips on or off. Watch. This is just re replaying the clip. The other cool modes that are up in here are gate mode and repeat mode. Gate and repeat mode both follow along when you hold down the launch button and then do something when you let go. Gate mode, the clip just stops when you let go. Another great function for users of those control surfaces. Watch how if I have these all highlighted and then I configure it to also not follow launch quantization, I essentially have a drum machine. Right, so that's super fun too. So now you can start finger drumming with your clip patterns and as you hold the drum pad down it plays the pattern. Real common setting for that is maybe to keep your launch quantization on sixteenths and that way when you do hold it down it'll at least stay phrased correctly with the other songs or sounds playing on your clip slot grid. The repeat mode is going to follow launch quantization as well but it's going to repeat at the rate of the launch quantization until you let go. Mm -hmm. 
So that's really neat too. Now for drum beats, as you can tell, it gets a little tricky. So what's really common to do in that setup is to click one in the scene or in the, in the group and to have this one on one bar quantization. So now you can freely improvise and whenever you're good and ready, hit the top one and it'll wait till the downbeat to drop itself. Keep in mind you can record that in MIDI or audio to a new track at any time, and it's going to give you just the MIDI content. Create a new MIDI track by hitting Shift Command T, show the I.O. section by hitting Option Command I, and choose MIDI from your 909 kit or wherever you're getting that signal from. Here we go. Right, so now we have a whole new pattern. Dang. We can come down here and hit Command I to create a new scene, and now I can drag that in. Oh, <laughs> dude. New pattern. So yeah, those are kind of like ways that, you know, now this isn't to say that I'm going to be using these techniques in the studio, I mean on the stage in a performance setting, but for me, my best tracks ever feel like I'm playing them live even if I'm hanging out at, in my mom's basement. I still feel I'm summoning that kind of live performance mindset. So these tricks are helpful. The other technique I'm going to show you with groups of launched clips, or groups of clips, pardon me, is legato. This is my favorite of all of these tricks, and this one's going to really hopefully inspire you guys. So I'm going to grab all these. I'm going to keep them in trigger mode. I'm going to engage legato again. I have all of these selected in the stack. And then I'm going to go to the quantization. I'm going to say none. Now what I'm going to do, just because this is not the controller video, is I'm going to key map and I'll use my number pads. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I can bang on one through six to get my rhythm happening. Check it out. If that's not fun, I don't know what is. But now, of course, that's something that can, of course, be then resampled endlessly right onto the track. Oh my god. So between Legato, the four different launch modes, and this quantization function, we are killing it on turning Live's Clip Slack grid essentially into a sampler that we can play with our QWERTY keyboard or with any sort of MIDI input device. That's how I set my stuff up, my clips, for jamming. Um, and I hope you like this technique. I'm going to walk us out here with a little bit more screwing around. Command, select. Let's do this one, and this one, and maybe this lead. This has been James Patrick, and I hope you check more of us out over at slamacademy.com. We've got online classes in Ableton, sound design, and plenty of other fun topics.